We are all gathered here today to remember the killing and the murder of a young, innocent young child in front of his mother. I would like to thank you all for coming and would like to welcome you all to this vigil in which we commemorate the murder of a child who has done nothing, who has not committed any crimes, who had no right to die, yet he was brutally murdered in front of his mother anyway. No matter what religion or what faith you follow, no matter who you associate with, all people and all humanitarians should condemn this act. It is natural that we find this act horrific and we find this act disgusting as no child, no matter what they have committed, deserves to die, especially a child who has done no crimes, especially a child who has not done anything. The, the young child was killed by a taxi driver in Saudi Arabia, among finding out the fact that he was Shia. So this child who belongs to the Shia faith was murdered in front of his mother by a taxi driver for simply only for the fact that he was Shia. He had not committed a crime. He had not done anything wrong, yet he was brutally murdered. Re reports claim and try to hide this fact by saying that the taxi driver was a mentally unstable man and that the killing of this child was a coincidence. It was a coincidence that he was a Shia. However, we all know that Shias have always been tormented across history and this is only one example of many killings and many crimes that are committed against our people. So we gather here today as a sign and as a message and we ask authorities to reveal the true story behind this killing. We ask them to reveal to us and expose what actually happened and what actually took place so that we can honor the, live, the memory of this young child who was killed. So we start off our vigil with a recitation of the Quran as a sort of Fatiha and a sort of honor for this child. We welcome one Sayyid Jalal Ma'asumi with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I kindly request all of you, sisters and brothers, meanwhile the recitation of the Holy Quran, please keep quiet and listen to the verses of the Holy Quran. Please for the happiness of the soul of Shaheed Zakaria and the patience for his mother, please say a very loud salawat ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وإذا الجبال سيرت وإذا العشار عطلت وإذا الوحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت وإذا النفوس زوجت وإذا الموءودة سئلت وإذا الموءودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت وإذا الموءودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل 
أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا ولقد جاءتهم رسلنا الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا 
قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون الذين إذا قالوا الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئن ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنة يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ترجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية وادخلي في عبادي فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي الله أكبر الله أكبر أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله 
رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك مالك يوم الدين إياك ما إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نعبد وإياك نس اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا صدق الله العلي العظيم. Please for the happiness of Shahid Zakaria's soul and for the patience of his innocent mother. Please say. Fatiha and Surah Al-Ikhlas and a very loud salawat ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. We thank the Sayyid and the dear brother for that wonderful recitation. As we said, that recitation was recited in honor of the soul, in honor of the memory of this young child. As I said before, this is a humanitarian crime. It's not... A, we are not here over any political reasons. We are here simply for the, to get the real truth and the real story behind this child who had done nothing and yet he was murdered. And our religion, Islam, completely condemns these killings. No matter what faith you may follow within the religion, all faiths should condemn this killing. And without further ado, we welcome the esteemed poet and our dear brother, Brother Nuri Sardar, we welcome him with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I can't sleep. My blood is too cheap. My blood is too cheap. I can't sleep. My worthless blood flowing with my heartbeat time Less of flesh and bone and more boneless meat I can't climb out of injustice I'm in too deep It's too common to hear that our blood bleeds Blood flows like rivers and our pile of bodies is steep We are as cheap as autumn leaves Whose carcasses no one wants to sweep We've been so used to it for so long It's only a matter of time before our mothers weep The centuries grow out of years That have themselves grown out of weeks where we've been cut up and chewed up like true lips weakened by men who underestimate our resolve our tongues are imprisoned by our gums our tongues are imprisoned by our gums they're trialed when they're let loose to speak and that blood that flows through our veins overflows now because it knows how so many want it to bleed so out it seeps i hear them say that death creeps up on you but we welcome it into our home like an old friend no surprise come and rest and feed our babies don't cry when they get cuts because we're well aware of what it's like to bleed we're not wolves because we don't kill for sport we don't enjoy hurting others and therefore we're seen as sheep fair game 
a fear game made to make us look like we deserve death. Oil and spoils and land and grains of sand are worth more than the air we breathe in, oh man. God damn, God damns those people when he says, oh man, the killing of one person is like the killing of all mankind. But they found loopholes because they don't consider us a part of mankind. How can man of any kind be so unkind? Did their fathers not show them love? Did their fathers not show them love? Allah himself quotes this child when he says what was my sin but not even Allah can convince them since that verse was revealed how many children have there been and therefore our blood is cheap I can't sleep I can't sleep our blood is too cheap I can't go on our sun is outshone flickers gone but will march on We'll march on in the oceans our mothers weep. We'll march on in the oceans of blood so cheap. For I tell you something about our blood. You can shed it, but know that whatever you sow, you reap. So when you tear us up and rip us apart and watch that blood leak out, then you drink that blood like wine and get drunk on our purity. Then you sit and dine on the limbs of our kids because she, our kids, make the best feast. And you bomb us and kill us and rape us and destroy us. But you didn't know that our blood flows with seeds. You thought our blood was cheap, but from the rivers of our blood glows, grows roses. You thought our blood was cheap, but revolutions are born out of it. You thought his blood was cheap, but we will never forget Zachariah. You thought his blood was cheap, but we'll use it to buy your downfall, to buy your end. And then, then... We'll sleep. We thank the esteemed poet and our dear brother Nuri Sardar for his recitation and the remembrance of this young child. We will now welcome on the doctor, the esteemed brother, Dr. Ali Al Halli, who will give a few words on this situation and on this murder in honor and the remembrance of this young child. We welcome him on with Allah Salawat Ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين I think it's cold Right, so we need to warm up with a louder salawat than the Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ahsantum, qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa man adlamu mimman iftara ala Allah kadiban. Aw kadhaba bi ayatih. Innahu la yuflihu al-zalimeen. إنه لا يفلح الظالمون صدق الله العلي العظيم Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته 1400 years ago a group of terrorists beheaded in broad daylight a toddler in front of his parents that was in the land of Karbala. But why did they do that? It was because that toddler was the son of Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Today, my brothers and sisters, history repeats itself. The same people, the same ideology has beheaded a child called Zakaria in front of his mother. Why? Because Zakaria was the follower 
of the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, this murder happened in broad daylight. But we haven't heard anything from the Saudi authorities. We have so many questions unanswered. Number one is that who is this man who committed this brutal murder? And why have we not know or why do we not know his identity? Number two, if so claimed he was mentally ill, then why was this individual allowed to drive a taxi? And number three, why have we not heard from any witnesses knowing again that this happened in broad daylight? And there are so many other questions unanswered. Reports do claim, my brothers and sisters, that this is, this killing had very much sectarian motives. The issue about Wahhabism, Wahhabis killing the Shias is not new. Example, in July last year, a Shia man in the name of Baqar Ahmed Ismail was brutally shot dead by so-called mentally ill person in Saudi Arabia and so many different other killings. The history of Wahhabism is of course known. It is not surprising that we see these particular killings. The history tells us, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, in, 19, in 1801, the Wahhabis attacked the holy city of Karbala. They massacred thousands of Shias, including women and children. Many of the Shiites shrines were destroyed, including the shrine of Imam al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad. After this, the Wahhabis also massacred the main po male population and enslaved the women and children in the city of Taif in Hijaz in 1803. This histor historical events, this massacre in history should always be remembered. Also, my brothers and sisters, in 1988, fatwa was passed by the country's leading cleric. Abdul Aziz bin Baz denounced the Shias as apostates. Abdul Rahman al Jibreen, a member of the higher council of ulama, sanctioned the killing on Shiites in 1994. These are important information that has to be mentioned in such gatherings. And the tragedy is, my brothers and sisters, that the Wahhabis, this criminal ideology, this evil ideology also exists in the United Kingdom. Someone in the name of Anjam Chowdhury that is known to all of you followed or follows that particular ideology. And of course, we cannot forget ISIS or the non-Islamic state when we talk about the ideology of Wahhabism. Many of the ISIS members follow that particular ideology. A report by the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, this is very important, called the CRC, dated 4th of February 2015.23a states that ISIS in Iraq has systematically listen to this has systematically killed children belonging to religious and ethnic minorities including numerous cases of mass execution of boys as well as reports of beheadings crucifixions of children and burying children alive. This is three years ago, three, four years ago. This wasn't at the time of Jahiliya where they used to bury girls alive. This was four years ago by individuals who follow this particular ideology. They bury children alive. What sort of a mental state do these individuals have? 
this ideology of Bin Taymiyyah, my brothers and sisters, of killing the my religious minorities, and especially the Shias, has to stop right now. Zakaria, my brothers and sisters, is the victim of this toxic ideology that has spread across the world. Zakaria is the victim of terror that knows no friends. Zakaria is the victim of hate, the hate that has seen thousands of innocent men, women and children die, especially in Iraq, because they are Shia. Zakaria is the victim of injustice, where children die because they belong to a minority religious group. Zakaria is the victim of incompetence by the useless Arab countries who are incapable of uniting against the Zionist enemy and their allies. Zakaria is not the first and will not be the last until we eradicate the Wahhabi ideology from the face of this earth we will have more cases of Zakaria. We've stood here too many times, my brothers and sisters. I've had enough. We've stood here too many times in vigils, remembering those who have been killed because of injustice, because of this toxic ideology. Today, we also remember the thousands of Shia Muslims who have been murdered by the people who follow this particular ideology. Why? Just because they say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, wa aliyun waliyullah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We need to create a movement, my brothers and sisters. Praying by itself when you say, pray for the people in Iraq, pray for the people in Saudi, Pray for the people of Yemen is not enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quli Quran, in the Amanu, and then what? Wa amilu salihat. Not just in the Amanu. Belief by itself is not enough. It needs to be accompanied in parallel with action. Just praying is not enough, my dear brothers and sisters. We need a movement. What are our demands? The first demand is we need an independent investigation into the killing of the young Zakaria. Perhaps with the involvement of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children, CRC, which is most ratified international human rights treaty in history, which has established the widely supported view that children and young persons have the same basic general human rights as adults and also specific rights that recognize their special needs. Number two, we demand answers to the questions we asked at the start as soon as possible. Number three, we demand from our Foreign Secretary, the United Kingdom Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, to put pressure on the Saudi authorities for this to happen. Number four, we demand the eradication of the Wahhabi ideology in this world, and at least in the United Kingdom. This is vital, my brothers and sisters. We need to all come together. Unity is vital. Shia, Sunni, and even the divisions within our Shia faith. Forget it who you, which marja you follow. Forget it which mosque you actually go to. I'm not interested. What I am interested in is for you to unite with me, together, so we can topple this ideology. We've had enough of killings. This ideology has eradicated thousands of the Shiites for the last thousands of years, starting from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Isn't it enough just because we believe that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the first Khalifa? Just because of our belief, we should pay that price. Why? Today, my brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity to stand up and be counted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Grand Mata, Zakaria, Al Jannah, with the infant of Al Hussein alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We thank the doctor for his wonderful talk about how twisted the ideology of the people that killed this little child are and how we need to start a change among ourselves in order for us to make a real change for this child and for the rest of the people who are suffering from this sort of injustice. Before we break up for salah, we welcome on Sayyid Ali Nawab who will also speak about this the, and speak in honor of this little child. We welcome on Sayyid Ali with Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, peace be upon you all. I've just literally been asked to speak. I had two points to raise, and they are historically, if we were to research about this ideology, we will not be surprised to see that this individual who actually committed this atrocious act by beheading this six-year-old innocent child followed his leader who 1,400 years ago committed the same atrocious act against the daughter of the Holy Prophet of Islam when he attacked the house of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam this innocent six-year-old Zakaria was going to visit the Prophet of Peace, the Holy Prophet of Islam. He was the Prophet of Peace. Zakaria was on a day out to visit the shrine of the Holy Prophet of Islam. He was going to, to be taught how to respect others, how to be peaceful amongst others. What was the reason that this six-year-old child was to be beheaded? Because he's going to visit Rasulullah and because he followed the original message of Islam, not the fake message of Islam, which this criminal came they say he was insane, but this is not true. They try to cover it up. It is the responsibility of every single human being who wants justice and peace in this world. Not only us, the Muslims. Every single person who resides in the West is going to be in problems. His security will be affected as long as this thought and this lineage continue to provide and feed their thoughts amongst the brains and mentality of these individuals that's the first so all of us not only muslims not only arabs or those who go to mecca or go to medina are going to be affected by this everyone should know that as long as criminals like this individual walk freely in the streets of Saudi Arabia, everyone is going to be in danger. And the second message is to the members of parliament, is to the politicians of this country, until when are you going to put your hand in the hands of a regime that allows such a mentality and such a school of thought to continue teaching its individuals in the universities and the institutes and the educational centers the thoughts of Wahhabism. From one side, you say we are fighting terrorism and we have won the war on terrorism. But from another side, you keep feeding those institutes with your money, with your pounds and dollars. 
The reason that Zakaria was beheaded on the 1st of February is because politicians who affiliate themselves to the Saudi regime are putting their hands in their hands today. So brothers and sisters, all the free thinkers of the world, it is our responsibility the same way we fight poverty and the same way we fight child abuse and the same way we fight freedom of speech and freedom of rights. We have to fight those individuals. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We will now welcome on the next speaker, my dear friend and my dear brother, Minhal Khafaji, who will be speaking on the, about this little child and in honor of the memory of this kid who was murdered for no reason and for no crime. We welcome on Minhal with Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all praise and gratitude be towards him. My fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, and my equals in humanity, I bid you the Islamic greeting of Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Imam Ali alayhi salam taught us that wherever there's injustice, we stand up against it. For years, us the Shia have been the subject of oppression, and for years the world has been silent on the genocide that goes on daily on the Shia. We're here today in Marbalash to make it clear to the world and to make it clear to anyone who hasn't heard of the genocide that goes on daily. We are here to make it clear to them that this does happen and it happens every single day. Wherever you go in the world, the Shia are killed or have been the subject of oppression. One has to go no further than Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Nigeria and South Africa and many more countries to see the disgusting behavior of some individuals against the minority in Islam. Imam Ali alayhi salam has said, saying my name will never be easy in any generation at all. When the mother, when that mother sent her salutations on Muhammad and his family, her son Zakaria was brutally beheaded by a filthy individual who has been brainwashed by the propaganda that is being taught there in that country. As in naturally, any mother would love to see her child grow up. Any mother would love to see her child grow up and get married, have children of their own. But sadly, that hope for that mother ended on that day. On the 1st of February 2019, the young Zakaria was brutally beheaded by that individual. When an innocent child is killed, any rational human being, any rational human being's heart would be filled with anger, would stop for a second and say that this is an immoral act. This act is not something which a genuine human being would do. It's either of a mental illness or something that they have been taught from a very young age. And in this case, it's exactly what they've been taught from a very young age. Why is our blood halal for you? Why is it that our blood being shed is halal for you? Daily, Shia are being killed, slaughtered because of an ideology that was created 500 years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. A terroristic ideology. I remember one day in Iran, when I was going up to my hotel room in the elevator, Imagine this is the level that the Shia across the world, even from countries like that, have got to. I remember a brother walks into the elevator with me. We exchange our salams and I ask him, brother, where are you from? He says to me, I'm from Medina. I said to him, oh, so you're from, Sa from Saudi Arabia? He says, no, I'm from the Medina of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. To me, the country of Saudi Arabia does not exist. What level of oppression does it have to reach? Between 1979 and 2003, Saddam's terror regime tortured and killed millions of the Shia. Because of what? Because the majority were from the Ja'fari school. Because they believed in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Ali and Waliullah.
because they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept Allahumma salli ala Muhammad if it's not followed by wa ali Muhammad. And this isn't the first, nor will it be the last, that a Shia will be killed. Take a companion like Hujr bin Adi al Kindi. When his son was killed in front of him, his only wish before his son was killed was that his son would be killed before him. Why? Someone asked. Everyone loves their children. If you have a child, you know you love them more than anything in this world. When Hujr bin Adi's son was beheaded in front of him, he smiled a smile in front of them. And when asked why, he said, I am honored that my son died loving Ali. I fear that you may brainwash him into loving you. But since he's killed in the path of Ali alayhi salam and the Ahlul Bayt, I am honored. I have no reason to fear anymore. And that's why I give this direct message to anyone who's had anyone lost because of this terroristic ideology. And to everyone watching, to everyone here, and to everyone listening at home, I would like to say, and to the mother of Zakaria, I congratulate you. I congratulate the mother of Zakaria, and I congratulate the father of Zakaria, and I congratulate the family of Zakaria, and I congratulate the Shia of Zakaria, and all the families that have lost someone in the path of Ali. I, congrat I congratulate them for raising such stars and flowers that because of their love for Ali, they have now joined Ali alayhi salam. And one of my friends once said, once said to me, how funny is it that they preach against the destruction of the graves of Al Muhammad, but they guard the birthplace of Ali. How funny is it that they preach against the destruction of the graves of Al Muhammad when they protect the Kaaba, the birthplace of Ali? Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We thank my, our dear brother Minhal for his talk as he explains how throughout history we have always been subject to murder and to torture due to our love for Amir al Mu'mineen, due to our love for Ali ibn Abi Talib. And now we welcome on our next speaker, who will be Sister Zainab Amy, who will also speak in honor of this little child. We welcome her on with the last salawat, ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi raji'oon. To God we belong and to God we shall return. My brothers and sisters, and to anyone else who is listening to this, I extend the Islamic greeting of assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all. I don't need to introduce to you this ideology of Wahhabism and its aims and objections. Nor do I need to tell you of how these people, they are propagating this message across the world, poisoning the hearts and the minds of the people with their sadistic literature, which quite frankly should be banned and it should be burnt. I don't need to introduce this to any of you because we are all familiar with this. Yet how does the world respond? This child, Zachariah, he was six years old. He was still a baby. He had his whole life in front of him. He could have gone on to do great and awe-inspiring things. And yet his life was stolen by a man who beheaded him in front of his screaming mother. And yet, how does the world respond to this? There's no international media outcry. There's no condemnation from world leaders. Our blood is not important because we're Shia. It doesn't matter. And yet, subhanAllah, you find these same people, the ones that are helping and supporting the countries that are propagating this ideology, you find them complaining when terrorism and violence has arrived at our very doorstep. But we, we are the Shia. Chivalry is our armor and courage is our flag. We are the fawn in their eyes. Though seemingly insignificant, we are able to tear apart the flesh of falsehood. We out of everyone, we are the ones most vocal against this Wahhabi bloodlust. And this is why they despise us for it. Not because of the propaganda they put out, but because of how vocal and how fearless we are in their eyes. 
we take care of the message of Islam, the pure Islam of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. The kind of man who when he emigrated to the city of Medina, the first thing he did, he wrote up a constitution which not just protected the rights of the Muslims, but also the non-Muslims there, the Christians and the Jews. Because in that time, the Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, they were neighbors. They would go to their places of worship. They would interact with each other with kindness and dignity, how human beings should do. And when you find whenever the city of Medina was under attack, the Prophet would send Muslims to go and defend these people. This is Islam. And you find with these Wahhabis, what do, what do they believe? They believe that if you kill a Jew, a Christian, a non-Muslim, or even just a Muslim who doesn't agree with them, you get a one-way ticket to paradise. We stand against this. We are the Shia of Ali, son of Abu Talib, the successor of the Prophet Muhammad, the man who grew up and used to follow the Prophet Muhammad as a child, like a camel follows its mother. Imam Ali, he was the kind of leader. He wasn't the kind of leader that lived in these luxurious palaces or sat on thrones made out of gold and silver. Rather, he was the kind of man he used to walk in the marketplace and he would talk to the people and hear their grievances. The one day he was walking through the marketplace and he saw a beggar on the street and he got so enraged. He turned to the people and he said to them, why are you doing anything about this? And they said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, oh, commander of the faithful. It's just an old Christian man. It's no big deal. Imam Ali, he became so enraged, he went and helped this man. The leader of the Muslims, he went and helped this man personally. This is what Islam is, my brothers and sisters. And it doesn't matter how much these Wahhabis try and twist our beautiful religion to suit their lusts and their desires. They will never be victorious. It doesn't matter if they kill every single last Shia on this earth. It doesn't matter if our blood becomes dry on the pavements. They cannot kill our legacy. Have they learned nothing from Karbala? When they killed Imam al Hussein, what did they say? They said, we have killed Ali and the sons of Ali. We have obliterated their memory. Look how today in 2019 across the world, Shia and non-Shia alike, they take Imam al Hussein as their role model. When will these people learn that when the blood of the innocent falls to the ground, that is when the reign of the martyr begins? My heart especially is with this family that is grieving today that probably feels like no one cares about them. We, the Shia of London, we love and we care about them. And I hope this message gets to them in one way or another. I hope they know that their baby is being taken care of in heaven by Imam al Hussein himself. Because our Imam, he knows exactly what it's like to lose a child. It is no coincidence that a thousand years ago, a man of no Islam, he shot an arrow into the neck of Ali al Asghar, And you find today a man of no Islam behead Zakaria on the streets of Medina. But for his mother especially, my heart, my thought, my prayers have been with her for the last few days. Because the love that a mother has for her child, it, it goes beyond log logic and science. From the moment she finds out she's pregnant, she'll change her whole life for that little baby. She'll start eating differently, she'll start dressing differently, she'll stop doing things that will put her child at risk. Even when she's at home, she'll be extra careful not to knock her pregnant stomach against the corner of a table or a kitchen surface. Imagine then, with all that love, with all that willingness to sacrifice yourself in you, imagine then having to watch your baby boy murdered in front of you and you are powerless to do anything about it. My brothers and sisters, my equals in humanity, 
at this moment, even though this calamity it is choking us. And they mock us for our tears. Though they do not realize that it is through our tears we water this revolution. Remember the most important, most powerful weapon each and every one of you have is your prayers. Because our master Imam al Hassan said that the distance between the heavens and the earth is the cry of an oppressed person in prayer. So my brothers and sisters, please, from your hearts now, not from your egos, please raise your hands with me. Come on, pray, raise your hands. My Lord, my Lord, my God, there is no better judge than you and there is no better source of justice. My Lord, I ask you, please, give justice to the Shia of Ali and to all those who are facing religious persecution. Let that poor family know that our thoughts and our prayers and our love are with them and bring these murderers to justice. And my Lord, I beg you, I know we're unworthy, but please, please, for the sake of all that is good and just in this world, please hasten the reappearance of our Imam, Ajallah ta'ala farajahu sharif and Prophet Jesus alayhi salam. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين We thank our sister for that wonderful talk and now we welcome on another esteemed poet and someone who will be reading more poetry in, in honor of this child we welcome on sister Maryam Azzedin with Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad She, a pronoun often misused misjudged and incorrectly defined. Although she refers to one girl, it is she who puts the man in mankind. Yes, she is a three letter word and cannot take much physically, but the, let the rooted markings on her face, which are scattered so freely, speak up to the emotion and mental stress she bears daily. The type that causes discoloration in her hair and puddles on her cheekbones, the kind that only she and only she can bear alone. They, uh, they say home is where the heart is, but when she, he comes home, he says, where is she? So although she is a pronoun, she is also a connective, connecting the source of our existence to peace and tranquility. She is the manifestation of peace and love in her family. She manifests and manifests until they become flourishing members in society. So you see, she is also a noun and a verb. She constantly gives and loves with no restraint and protects and nurtures without a single complaint. When she vows to protect you, she does so with every bone in her body. Her love knows no limits, what we would all call unconditionally. But often she may love with the expectation of gratitude. So appreciate that she is your helper, your advisor, your safe haven and make her feel valued. She provides the difference between good and best. She will monitor your finances so that even your accountant is impressed. It is her tears which race down when she hears about the oppressed. And when it is time to battle the injustices, she is first to protest. So you see, she is a concept, a state of being, one which the English language can't explain in one category. She is the mother, the sister, the daughter, the wife, and any she that came to your mind immediately. So young Zakaria. Although you didn't live to see the sacrifices she makes and would have made, your mother loves you and wishes you would have stayed. Although it hurts to see you gone, she knows you didn't die in vain. You left this world because the oppressors are so offended by a title, by a name. And to know that Abdullah, son of Hussein, was martyred before you, eases the pain. So young Zakaria. Know that history is repeating itself again and your mother knows it too but still wishes she hadn't got into that taxi. But there is no shortage in oppressors. In fact, they are spread around evenly. That where she didn't get into this taxi, there would be another one, another train station, another attack on our religiosity. Oppression is a disease which has existed for centuries and will not be cured until the Imam's reappearance and his 313. 
they say your problem feels less problematic when you see other problems in comparison. Like when it's time for the battle of Karbala and Umm al banin gives up four of her sons. Or when Zainab salam sees nothing but beauty. Despite the martyrdom of her brother, she makes it her duty. So as to maintain the principles set by Hussein. So when events like the ones in Karbala happen again, know you have been chosen to live a somewhat reflection of their pain. So my dear Zakaria, may you rest in peace knowing that the females in history did not stand up only to fall consequently. So your mother will stand with them, firm with dignity. And since heaven lies under her blessed feet and you are killed by the hands of the oppressors, then in heaven you shall meet. So you see, she will always be there. Your mother will always be your she and will love you for eternity. Let's appreciate and respect the females in our lives. They are the mothers of humanity. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We thank Sister Maryam for that wonderful poem and her wonderful poetry. Just before we conclude, I'd like to personally thank you all for attending. I'd like to thank all the organizers who organized such a vigil, as it's very important that we remember our brothers and our sisters who are being oppressed. And inshallah, we are trying to make a change. As you can see, there are candles here at the front, and there many of you have been handed candles. If you could please light them up and bring them up to the front so that we may honor this young child, Zakaria. And um, please do not make it too crowded. So if you're handing, if you're putting one down, just do it quickly and make space for someone else. Thank you all for coming. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.